video now, we're going to explore a little bit a method called uh, so we're going to actually create our first strategy. It's not going to be a strategy, it's just going to we're just going to debug stuff and I'll show you how on bar update method works. So, uh, this window is pretty annoying, it's always topmost, okay? So, if I go ahead inside a strategy, I'm just going to create a add new item, which is going to be a class and we're going to we're going to call it um, class I don't know ninja class strategy okay so if I go ahead and create it like that so I get a class and uh, I'm just gonna open up any other strategy inside here and uh, well it doesn't really matter so I want to keep the namespace to strategy yeah although it's in the custom folder just so I don't have to recompile it uh, and, and uh, re -re I mean re-reference it public class oops so it's got to be public right and uh, I mean there's some basic C sharp stuff that's um, I probably won't be covered I assume that you know what public and private is uh, so basically the class has to be public okay so I'm gonna inherit from a class called strategy and um, I mean you don't really even know I have to know what inheritance is just do this and uh, you will be fine so basically, uh, inside this strategy um, inheritance, I can override a few things, right? And uh, one thing I can override is actually, uh, well, let me just, um, yeah, okay, is if I go override, there you go, it actually show me what I can override, but so today we're just going to talk about on bar update there it is so if I gotta override that and uh, one more thing I want to override is the initialize so initialize is basically every time the strategy is initialized and that happens a lot of times not only when you like you know pump the strategy on actually happens quite a few times and I'll actually show you so if you want to debug stuff right so you can print use print method the print method is output any string to the output window right so initializing um, well test strategy okay and uh, right here if you go ahead and so this is let's just give it a name on bar Called. So this is an event that is called every time a bar is closed and uh, on bar clo called and uh, I'm gonna output the bar number okay <clears throat> so uh, I'm gonna output the bar number and also uh, I'm gonna do this calculate and bar close and I'm gonna set it to true okay so the difference between calculate on bar close true and false that's the main thing I want to show in this lecture and uh, if it's true that means the strategy will execute on every bar if it's false it's going to execute on every tick and that's the only difference so let's have a look at uh, what, it, what it's going to look like so if I go ahead and build it control shift B so build succeeded now I gotta go inside here and com oops shot and compile so after I compile, I go into strategies, and that should be said. So there it is, Ninja class strategy. Okay. So I'm gonna remove this one. <clears throat> I'm gonna put this one on, and uh, click OK. So you can see that. Well, if I go ahead and actually clear this. So if I go ahead and clear this, let me just get rid of it. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of it. And I'm gonna clear this again. So you can actually see that when I go to strategies. Uh, what was the name so it's called initializing test strategy okay so you can actually see that even though I did not um, initialize anything I have initializing test strategy right so if I go ahead and uh, delete this again so the strategy is actually initialized right even when I open this window and if I click on it it see it initializes again because it has to give me these parameter lists so 
and if I go again, it see it initialized again, and if I go OK, and now I actually enable it, well, now I actually get the on bar called method. Okay, but the thing is that you gotta know, and uh, that's important because you might want to hook up different things, different events to your in, on override of initializations. Just when you do that, right? Just uh, make sure you understand that the initialized like event happens a lot of times and not only when the actual strategy is um you know yeah when you pump pump it on you know it only it actually happens when you open the strategy window happens when you click on it happens when you select it so it happens a lot of times okay and now you can see that the on bar cold method started on on bar 20 all right so um it actually skipped a few bars here i guess uh well we don't really know maybe because of this let's get rid of this indicator so and uh let's see what happens oh well, anyway so it's starting bar 20 uh we might investigate why that happens uh later but anyway it's starting bar 20 and it kept on going until 674 right and uh we can actually uh, do another so total bars and this is boring but this is important to understand that let's count how many bars we got so if I go close and count so close is an array of uh, well it's an actually data series object that returns an array or, or whatever list of uh, close prices right so and um, that's um, that's 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 what I got, right? So if I wanna I wanna I wanna see how many actually how many how many bars I got. So so F five to reload the chart. So now you can actually see that <clears throat> I got six hundred and seventy six bars, and but you see there's like this like weird thing in the end, right? I'm actually so you might think that. Okay, so I'm calling on bar update. So obviously this is the live bar. So this bar hasn't closed yet. So, but this bar has closed. And, uh, but for some reason, um, I got 676 bars, all right? But um, the thing is that this bar is actually 674. Okay, so my, you might wanna kinda understand why that happens. So if you go ahead, open this little data box here, and uh, when you mouse over a, a bar, it gives you the data, all right, for this bar. And in order to investigate this issue, we're actually uh, going to go ahead and uh, every time a bar is closed, we're going to call its time value, right? So to do that, we time zero, okay? So zero is a reference bars ago. So if you, if you select zero, that means on that particular excuse me, bar close, we're actually calling this bar close, okay? We're not calling yesterday's bar or after yesterday's bar. We're calling the current bar close. That's that's when we reference zero. If you want to know the yesterday, I mean, the previous bar close, you go one, two, five, eight, how many bars ago you want. So we don't want any bars ago, we want zero, okay? So <clears throat> let's have a look at that. Now, So we now we can actually get the time and we can see that so let's see where we started actually so did we start with this bar so this bar is um so here's the time so it's 2703.18 to 2 a.m so no we actually started at 2703.18.10 a.m okay so uh which is which is bar 20 right and that's right here so that's bar that's our first bar that we started with okay and uh <clears throat> that's our bar number 20 and our total number of bars is 676 so if we go to the final one right here all right is and we'll go here so our bar number 674 is probably this one right here which is nine o'clock, right? Okay, that's right. So this bar is number 674, 
okay and this bar is actually um what's it called it's, it's it's the last bar before the live bar okay so why is it not 675 okay and the reason for that is that well if you're not new to programming you know that so if, when we got an array okay let's say array of five so the way <clears throat> so this would be index zero one two three four imagine this one is your live bar well actually no imagine this one is your live bar right here okay because it does not go into the array okay so this four when you go count this will return five okay so if you wanna <clears throat> excuse me uh well the thing is that this will return five so in our case let's uh let's go back so when you go count this will return 676 okay so that means that in total we are actually we have 676 bars okay and uh if we go minus one so bar 675 is actually our live bar probably and bar number 674 is actually our last bar okay so that's that's the way it goes with uh, with ninja that's what i am um, figured out so basically it actually when you go count the bars it will actually count in this bar as well but when you reference when you want to reference the last bar on chart there's actually a uh, i think um a command that actually will give you that price uh, i don't remember what it is i'll look it up i think it's like last bar yeah last visible bar so i mean it's an int so let's just check it out last visible and uh, last visible bar uh, I wonder if that will be a dynamic uh, value actually and uh, because it's last visible well it returns something weird I mean that happens with ninja all the time anyway so but um, the thing is that so 676 total number of bars right if this is the count to do starting from zero so if you subtract one that means this is this is 675 and this is 674. Uh, I'm not sure if that made sense, but if you explore it on your own, you might get some interesting results. And uh, so that's that's about it for this lecture. Otherwise, it's going to get too long.